It's a confusing story. Now, tonight we've got one of Hot Car Dad's groomsmen. He comes forward. Ben McRae tells HL and affiliate WRC, WBRC that he is disgusted by his friend. Have a listen. I'm like, when did you, what happened? When did you become this person that we see on TV now? Or were you always like this and just hit it that well? I just don't want Baby Cooper to be forgotten. I want there to be justice for the suffering he had to go through. Now, this is a guy I would love to speak to on this program. Ben, please come on the show and help us figure this case out. Uh, I, I think you have some insights. The story is still, the cards are in the air as far as I can tell. I don't know who to believe, what to understand as the facts in this case. Let's look at what we do know about Justin Harris. He's 38 years old, married. We know he's from Alabama, living in Georgia. The question is, is he happily married? Is he looking to cheat? Is he a loving father who made a mistake? or a calculated killer. The groomsmen say the man we see on TV is not his friend. Jason, I haven't heard your thoughts on this case yet. Please have at it. Look, as a father, you know, I, I would say that I am not the res most responsible father that has ever existed, but on my worst day, even before I was a parent, on my worst day when I was a drug addict, I don't leave babies in a car, and I don't really care about the rest of it. As far as I'm concerned, he's done. This guy yeah. is done, and whether he did it on purpose or he didn't do it, does it make it worse? Yes, it does. But even if you accidentally did it, you, sh you should be gone. Right. I don't, want, I don't know why you're here anymore. Get off the planet. Sam? Yeah. And Dr. Drew, I love the fact that you asked the question, is he happily married? Uh, if you're happily married, you're not sexting pictures of your erect penis uh, to six different women. Uh, really? Uh, uh, listen, she may not be happily married, but these guys that are sex addicts can genuinely love their spouses or their partners. That does happen. Say, uh, uh, Jason. I'm allowed to do that. Well, you, really? You, you, uh, well, uh, Jason, why can't I just shut up, Drew? What's wrong with me? <laughs> Jason, but, but let me ask something. Uh, I'm going to harken back to the first story. You, even though you guys have an interesting relationship, you would never go on Craigslist and, and solicit stuff, would you guys? No. No, yeah. no, no. No, there, that, there's... Uh... And, Try, and even even the first time round, I wouldn't have used that. And, That's psychotic. Right. Okay. <laughs> and you're not preoccupied with this. In other words, you're not sexting and doing stuff so much that when you're driving your damn kid somewhere, you can't get your mind off that nonsense. Is oh that... yeah, yeah. I don't sex with children. No, I, I don't I mean, sex I, with them in the, in the vicinity. I don't have right. a conversation with right. my child and then go, here is my penis. All right. Now the nice. Atlanta Journal Constitution made a case against the, the the police's testimony. They they questioned it. Are the police lying on Hito, or did they maybe, this is the, the gentleman on the stand, who there was a big dis discrepancy between what he was reporting and what the Atlanta Journal of Constitution said they saw in the videotape. So the question is, was he just exaggerating a little bit, a few seconds here or there about what he was looking at to in order to bring this to a jury? Is that what investigators no. are supposed to do? No, Dr. Drew, he's testifying under oath, okay? And at the risk of sounding arrogant or like a misknow-it-all like a lot of the viewers think I am, I told you so, <laughs> okay? I told you so. You cannot rush to judgment because now what we have is the lead investigator apparently testifying under oath, which is under penalty of perjury, Dr. Drew, about what what he says he saw on that surveillance but tape. it was yes, wrong what? it was wrong exactly that's the point what's he so doing how are the, what's he doing he just, try, he just to... giving the worst case scenario to no, get this thing that's to trial. Not no? How, no he is testifying under oath in a court of law to the judge about what he saw on that surveillance tape and guess what those jurors are going to see that surveillance tape they're going to see that that what, what they see doesn't match up with this man's testimony how are they going to believe anything else those prosecutors are saying in this case all right this is terrible for the prosecution all right. Kirsten, Kirsten, I, I want you to be a juror here. The, the AJC says Justin Harris did not look into the car when he reopened. I'm, let's look at a video here. Is it possible, look at it, they, 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 we have a recreation of Harris's car here. Is it possible to open the door and look over the SUV, even if you didn't look directly in when you threw, was he threw light bulbs in or something during lunch, would you still notice the car seat with a 22-month-old in the back, would you not? Of course! Well, let me ask the juror. Yeah. Kirsten. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely, I mean, just if I was a juror in this case, I definitely think that you would. Additionally, some people have brought up in reports that the smell from the car would have been an indicator as well as what's going on in that car. But people can be distracted. But, you know, I think what's confusing everyone right now is he's being tried in the court of public opinion right now. And so you've got some people coming out really strongly in favor of him, others going, oh, my goodness, you know, this could, this could never have, have happened. You know, he's a horrible dad, all this stuff. And that's confusing everyone. It's going to confuse potential jurors, too, that have been 
and just like there's been so much information thrown yeah. out there about this case.